Hey guys, it's Fishy Chair here. So recently I went on a trip to China with my dad to visit family. I visited three cities, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Shantou, which is also known as Suatao. Suatao is actually my hometown and is a coastal city located in the Guangdong province. Suatao's main language is a dialect known as Diozhou, and I actually speak a fair amount of it since my parents spoke it around me while I was growing up. I haven't been to China in over 5 years, so there are a lot of things that surprised me on this trip. Starting off, my dad had a random sandwich in the seat pocket which I think they forgot to remove from the previous flight. I had a 3 hour stopover in Guangzhou from Sydney. At Guangzhou airport, I noticed a ton of knockoff shops such as Bread Talk and Happy Rich. It's worth noting though that Bread Talk has actually been around since 2000, so Bread Top is the imposter here. After waiting at Guangzhou for 3 hours, we leave for Santo. Finally landing in Taoyang Airport, the closest airport to Suatao, my cousin was kind enough to drive us to the city. The first thing that shocked me was how many EVs there were. The ones with green number plates are EV or hybrid, while the blue ones are internal combustion vehicles. Upon arriving in Shantou, I had to go grocery shopping with my grandma and dad. As you can see, the roads and paths are slightly kiko kiko, which in Teochew means wobbly and not flat. However, it's far from unusable. On the way to the markets, I spotted this very cute EV, which despite its size, actually seats 4 people but has no boot. I saw quite a lot of these around China. Arriving at the markets, it was definitely an experience to see no sidewalk and the stalls just being located on the edge of the road. It seems that they've integrated the infrastructure straight into the existing landscape as I saw trees growing straight through the roofs of the stores. In terms of paying in China, most places will take cash, but the norm is to pay via Alipay or WeChat. You simply scan or give them a QR code to scan and the payment is done instantly. I think this system has its advantages and disadvantages, but it was definitely very, very convenient using the same system for everything. After getting our vegetables, we went to the fishmonger and butcher section, which was definitely an experience I won't forget. I couldn't film too much because tourists weren't exactly normal here and people kept giving me funny looks, but there were creatures that I didn't know even existed. I think these are sea lice. Here we have some eels, mussels and some other shellfish. I don't know exactly what these pink things are, but I think they're swim bladders, which is an organ in fish that is used to regulate depth. Leaving the markets it was really a contrast in terms of the infrastructure between here and home. The population density here is so high compared to home in Sydney, and I felt like I was truly in an urban jungle. Crossing roads in Swatow and in China in general was so scary. It's extremely hazardous if you don't know how to, and I nearly got run over on my first day. What I've learned is that you just need to continuously walk at a constant speed and the traffic will navigate its way around you. If you look at incoming traffic and try to start or stop, there's actually a better chance that you'll get hit. Sometimes drivers don't respect red lights either. Another thing I noticed was the number of mopeds in the city. Words can't explain how many mopeds there are. The good thing is that most of them are electrified and the fumes could be a lot worse otherwise. For breakfast the following day, I had some soup and sa gui diao which translates to fried rice noodles. Super noodles were a recurring theme throughout my stay at Suatao, and the two bowls here usually cost around 45 RMB. Back at my apartment, the internet was really terrible, but apparently internet here is actually quite good most of the time. My emojis would take a minute to load, and sometimes it was just cursed. After a few days in Shantou, my dad and I took China's high-speed rail to Guangzhou. We were going to stop over in Xinjiang for a day and explore. China's high-speed rail network is objectively one of the most impressive in the world. They've built over 45,000 kilometers of high-speed rail throughout the country, which makes up for two-thirds of all high-speed rail in the world. The trains in the network run at speeds between 200 and 300 kilometers per hour. It's very impressive from an engineering standpoint, and it's definitely a core part of transporting people around the country. Getting off at Shenzhen, there were even more EVs here. 
The majority of cars I saw were electric, and there were a lot of Chinese brands as well, which I think looked really good. There were a few Teslas as well, but I saw a lot of BYD seals and BYD Hans, which we don't have in Australia. Every single bus and taxi I saw were all electric. Arriving at the electronic markets, it was definitely something I was really looking forward to. It was like walking into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, except everything is electronic components. They have everything here, and it's definitely a place that I would come back to visit in the future. Unfortunately, my itinerary didn't give us much time in Shenzhen, so we hopped back on the high-speed rail towards Guangzhou. In Guangzhou, I really started noticing these weird-looking hive machines. There's a few back in Shantou and Shenzhen, but in Guangzhou, a major city, I noticed them everywhere. There were a few brands, Energy Monster being the most common one. It turns out that these are rentable power bank chargers. Since so much of your life in China revolves around your phone, it makes sense that keeping your phone charged is a huge priority. All you have to do is scan the QR code with your Alipay app and it pops out a power bank for you. You get charged around 15 to 60 cents for half an hour or an hour of usage and you just return the bank to any charging station that you can find. For breakfast, we went to a restaurant near our hotel, which was halfway between fast food and a proper restaurant. I ended up getting some Tai Gui Diao again, corn and corn juice, which was surprisingly yummy. I met up with a friend from uni who happened to be in Guangzhou at the same time as me. We caught a Didi to the Liwan district, which had a lot of ancestral buildings. The Didi we caught cost us around 25 RMB for a 20 minute drive. It was an S tier ride in the BYD Han, which is BYD's premium sedan model. It was very quiet and a very pleasant journey. At our destination, we visited an ancestral building, which is believed to be the home of Bruce Lee's father. I also tried some non-alcoholic pineapple beer, which was pretty tasty. Afterwards, we went to a shopping mall and I actually saw a golden fish and a chair in the window of a jewelry store. At night, my dad, cousin and I traveled to a high rise in Guangzhou so that we could see the Canton Tower light up at night. We ended up going up nearly 100 floors and the elevator ride was so long that they actually gave us a chair to sit on. After this, there wasn't much left on the itinerary and we had to go back to Swatow to finish up some family related things and I spent the remainder of my trip doing work in my room. Overall, I really enjoyed the trip to China and I think there were a lot of things that Western countries can learn. 
However, there were also definitely some things I think could use some work, such as the air quality and infrastructure. I think the integration of a lot of services into a single phone app was really convenient though. If you've made it this far into the video, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new about China and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.